Hello! This is IOCage, the FreeBSD geo management tool, an overview its plugins and plugin development at the virtual BSD CAN 2020. I'm sorry I couldn't see everybody in person, but I am um, very thankful that we could do this um, virtually, and I, and I do appreciate all the work behind the scenes to get this going and sort of roll with the punches as it were. Alrighty, so uh, this talk um, is going to be about IOCage um, and why it's important. So jails, in my opinion, are one of the best, if not the best, after ZFS, of course, uh, features of FreeBSD. And they can do a lot of things, but managing them sort of very sort of everyday tasks um, is can be a little bit difficult. And that's why I sort of looked into finding a, a jail management tool to sort of help me do that. And I found IOCage and along with some of its other features that it brings to the table, uh, like ZFS integration of plugins, it makes for sort of really handy tool to have around. So we're gonna talk about that today. Quick little disclaimer here. I do use a couple images in this presentation. Um, just wanted to make sure we're all hunky dory there. All right, so who am I? So my name is Connor Bate. Uh, I've been a FreeNAS and PFSense user, the gateway drugs of FreeBSD, uh, as Michael Dexter puts it, uh, for about six years. Uh, I've been a FreeBSD user for about four. Before that, I was basically all Windows all the time. I thought IT was essentially just Active Directory and other Windows fun things. Uh, and sort of, I heard about open source and FreeBSD and Unix, and it sort of clicked that this is actually pretty cool and it's way better. And so here I am. Um, I live in this beautiful place. I actually want to do the talk like on my laptop down there, but unfortunately it's a little bit dreary right now. Um, so I have to settle for the house looking out the window. Um, so my day job is I work from home doing FreeNAS support, uh, among other things. And so I do see, um, how a lot of people use FreeNAS there on, with IOCage. So, uh, if you want to follow me on Twitter at ConnorBSD or send me email with questions or whatever you want to do, um, my stuff's there in the bottom right. Um, there will be a Q and A session after this. So free for to ask questions there too, but if you have something else, follow up, send me an email. Okay, let's talk about FreeBSD jails. So FreeBSD jails are the OS level containment option uh, in FreeBSD. Uh, they're first added to the base system in uh, FreeBSD 4.0. Um, so the jail utility in base does provide some management utility uh, along with jail.conf, uh, which is a little config file. Um, and that can do quite a lot of things uh, with some nice handy tricks. And if you want to more, learn more about that, I highly suggest you take a look at Michael W. Lucas's Jails book, um, available just about everywhere. Um, and that will sort of, you can learn some of those awesome tricks. Um, this is not to say that IOCage is better or worse than any other tool. Um, it's just easy to use and it does have some nice features. And the jail utility in base is obviously leveraged by IOCage quite heavily. Um, and since then, we've obviously seen some other features that have done tremendously well to sort of help jails along, um, like ZFS and VNet. Okay. Let's talk about some history here. Uh, so like I said, first there was jail. Um, we, we've since got some other tools along the way. Um, these aren't really in chronological order, but, uh, so we've got CBC. So this is a management utility, uh, mainly for VMs, Beehive VMs and Zen VMs. But uh, it does have some jail stuff in there too, and it does have a nice web UI. Um, so Easy Jail, Easy Jail was kind of the first popular uh, jail management utility. Um, first introduced in 2005, it's been since abandoned as of 2015. Uh, it added some nice kind of CLI utility as an alternative to jail.conf, and it was written entirely in shell. Bastille, Bastille, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, BSD. Uh, so this is fairly new. They first released in late 2018. 
Um, it's more of a utility for containerized applications, leveraging jail, of course, um, rather than sort of the everyday use that IOCage um, definitely is more used for. Um, but they've got a lot of great automation here and the developers are awesome. They're adding features like MAD and they're really sensitive and, and they, they do a lot with feedback. So um, I believe they have a couple other talks maybe at this BSD can this year. So I don't know if they're going to be before or after mine, but I highly suggest you check those out. Okay, uh, next we've got Warden. So Warden uh, came from the PCBSD project, released in 2010. Uh, it was one of the first jail managers to leverage ZFS. Um, and it did have an early plugin system. I found the plugin system on Warden was very difficult to develop with. Um, that's why I was so excited to see IOCage come to FreeNAS. And like I said, Warden was used extensively in the older versions of FreeNAS, round version FreeNAS 9, and so it was one uh, sort of last hurrah, and then uh, IOCage came in after that. Okay, I was thinking some IOCage history. So first committed to the FreeBSD ports tree in mid-2014. It was originally written in Shell, like Easy Jail. Um, as of 2017, it was rewritten entirely in Python. Um, I don't see this as either good or bad. Um, I'm not really as much of a Python developer to understand exactly why they did this, but it seems to work just fine. Um, and it's been used extensively in FreeNAS since version 11.1, .1, replacing Warden. Uh, it's got extensive ZFS integration. In fact, it requires ZFS. Uh, something called IOCell. So IOCage Legacy is what I'll refer to um, as the version of IOCage written in Shell, and IOCell is a fork of that. Uh, it's used as an alternative to resin day Python. Um, the, no dependency is written entirely in Shell. It's available in the porch tree. Um, it does most of the same things. Uh, IOCage would do minus a few features um, that have came in since. Right. Installation and requirements. So um, IOCage being written in Python does, of course, uh, require Python. Um, it does require Git, and it does require ZFS. Uh, you don't need root on ZFS. You just need an available um, ZFS pool. Uh, you can grab it pretty easily from the FreeBSD ports tree. Simple package install, and you're off to the races. Uh, you can grab it from GitHub as well. That's available out of the box in FreeNAS, and there's a web UI for management there, as long as um, as well as all the other FreeNAS goodies. Um, it does have a Git dependency, and that's primarily for its plugin system. Um, and there are migration scripts if you're running IOKG Legacy or IOCell, uh, or EasyJail, or even Warden. And it's pretty simple to specify the name of the jail. Run script and you're off for the races. Okay, IOCage and ZFS. So when you first install IOCage, you're gonna to need to activate that on a C pool. What activating does is it creates all these other data sets. So the first thing it'll do is it'll create sort of these list of data sets here. So downloading releases, right? So that'll store all your releases that'll be used for your jails, for clone jails and such, which we'll talk about shortly. Uh, a data set to store images. Images are basically kind of a zipped up tarball um, of your jail, and you can export those to another system if you wanted to, and it also contains all the metadata. Nice little data set to store logs, template jails, talk about in a moment. Um, and then each jail uh, will get typically its own data set, uh, which has the jail's root file system and uh, some jail metadata, like the name and options set about it and everything. Um, you can also create separate data sets and hand those entirely over to ZFS so it can manage them just like it owns that data set. Okay, uh, let's talk about the types of jails. So most common type you're going to see and the default type in IOCage, and uh, let's just specify something else, is the clone jail. Uh, this is a clone of the downloaded release data set. So when you first create a jail, you specify what release you want. So 12.1, 12.0, 11.2, whatever it may be. Um, nice thing about clone type jails is that they only consist of the space between the delta of between the specified release and added files. So if I add a file, remove a file, modify a file, that change will be taken up, but most of the actual file system that we're never really going to modify is going to be there and it can be used as many times as we need it to be. All right, base jails. Uh, these are thick jails that use an FS tab to mount the specified release and a thick jail is essentially copied from a specified release. They're fully independent. 
Um, these are pretty useful if you wanted to be wanted to copy or move these to another system or even spot these into a full machine or a VM if you wanted to. Uh, template jails. Uh, what you do is you create a jail with all the options you want, um, settings you want, whatever changes to the file system you want, and then mark it as a template. And now you can create any other jails um, based on that template. Last but not least, we have the plugin jail. This is typically a clone with plugin installed into it, which we'll talk about later. So IOCage will take any options usable in jail.conf, um, in addition to a few IOCage specific ones. It also allows you to specify ZFS options uh, since it is jailing its own data set. And like I said before, if you add an additional data set, you can hand that fully over to the jail and manage it with ZFS tools in the jail, just like um, it's a normal, normal machine. Um, these options are also used to specify various information about the jail, like the host name, whether it's just sort of boot, um, the IP address, data set location, plugin metadata, and such stuff. Uh, you can manage various rule sets and access to host resources, DevFS rule sets. Uh, maybe you want to allow the creation of two network adapters, uh, the use of the fuse, file system and user space, uh, Berkeley packet filter, thing like that. You can specify a list of packages to be installed after creation. This is simply just a JSON format a list uh, with the list of packages and the repository. And last but not least, you can specify the path to system files. Uh, this is awesome. So let's say you have a uh, host file, uh, maybe, or a resolve.conf or something you want to share between jails. You can have them all use the same one, so there's no additional configuration there. Okay. Jail networking type. So the first type we have is shared IP networking. Um, this is pretty simple. It doesn't really have any additional requirements. It essentially just uses an alias on the network interface and links that to the jail. Pretty simple, IOCage set, IP4 address, nickname, network interface name, pipe, the IP address, insider notation, and um, then the jail name. Uh, next we have NAT, network address translation. This user light is, utilizes the host IP address. Uh, and what this does is it allows you to take a port on the host and forward it to a different port in the jail, or you can use the same port, I guess, if you wanted to. So say we hit port 8080 on the host, um, we can forward that to the web server jail on port 80, so we can run a separate web server, or whatever you really want to do here. You only need the host IP address and as many ports as you can think of. Okay, uh, next we have VNet or vimage. So this does require support in the kernel of the FreeBSD machine running it. Um, so it, luckily it was added um, to the generic AMD64 kernel as of 12.0 release and later. Um, it does require the IF bridge, which I believe just got some awesome performance improvements lately. Um, definitely have to read into that. Um, and then some host configuration as well um, in etcrc.com cloned interfaces and such. Um, IOK should do that for you when you uh, install it. As, as I recall. Um, so with VNet or vImage, each jail receives its own completely independent network stack. Um, so completely separate from the host, completely separate from every other jail. So with a VNet jail, each jail needs to have its own IP address and a default route specified, just like any other machine. Um, or you can, of course, use DHCP, just make sure you enable it as well. Um, an IO cage will automatically create a bridge zero and a VNet zero dot whatever number of the jail you're using. So you can have as many VNet jails as you want on bridge zero and bridge zero also will contain your normal network interface. So I see this a lot where people want to use VLANs or they want to use multiple NICs on the same machine and separate those out to different jails. So first step to doing that is you need to create a new bridge interface. You just use IF config for this. So in this case, we'll call it bridge one. Uh, we'll assign the new NIC, um, physical NIC to bridge one if you're doing that way, or if we're using a VLAN, you can assign the VLAN. If you are using a VLAN, don't assign its parent interface, just the VLAN interface to bridge one. Um, and then we can set the jail to use the new VNet interface. So VNet one, that'll be a separate VNet and it'll automatically create that for us. And it will be assigned to bridge one. And then we simply assign the IP address to VNet one, the default route or DHCP. If you want to go that way. 
and that way it'll only uh, be able to talk to other um, in interfaces on that bridge uh, or VLAN. Okay, IOKH plugins. Um, so plugins are an awesome feature of IOKH and I think what set it set apart uh, from some of the other management utilities or just the base utilities. Um, so these are single one-click deployment of popular software. They're highly configurable and that's thanks to basically you can, whatever you can do with shell scripting, you can do here. Uh, so it does utilize the package uh, utility for grabbing packages from various repositories, either the official FreeBSD one or you can specify others, host your own if you want to. Um, it does require Git um, and extensive shell scripting, typically BenSH, but you don't have to. So plugin artifact manifests are updated via Git. They exist on a repository and they'll pull down um, when you install a plugin. Uh, and you can install plugins either via the command line or via the FreeNAS web UI if you're using FreeNAS. Uh, they can be easily updated. And one of the nice things you can actually prepare, prepare for updates beforehand and handle what happens before and after, uh, which we'll talk about here in a minute. So the first uh, part of the plugin uh, ecosystem is the artifact file. Um, this is sort of the manifest of everything. Uh, it includes the plugin name, the schema version, uh, the desired plugin release, which is a FreeBSD release. Uh, remember, it cannot be substantially newer than the host. Uh, next, we have the artifact Git repository. This is typically GitHub, GitLab, or Gitia. Um, there actually is a both a GitLab and a Gitia plugin, I'm pretty sure. Um, and you don't have to use these. You can you can use any valid Git repository. Next so we have Jail Properties supports any Jail Properties that IOKH supports. It's where you typically set up your NAT or enable VNet or something like that. You will need a list of specified packages. Uh, these will be installed automatically. And the nice thing about packages is that they automatically will grab the dependency if it's available. Uh, you need the repository, uh, the fingerprint, and just an internal revision number. Okay, so here's a little example. Uh, so I wrote a blog post about creation of the SAB NCBD plugin. Um, this is a popular news group reader, um, FreeNAS, but it's, here's a little example here. All right, next we have the heart of the plugin ecosystem, the installation script. So post install to SH. So this is ran inside the jail um, after the packages listed in the list of packages have been installed, but before overlay has been downloaded. I'll talk about overlay here shortly. Um, it's typically written in POSIX shell. It doesn't have to be. You can write it in bash or whatever. Just make sure you actually install that uh, prior. So some normal post installation tasks include enable and starting services, you know, sysrc, service, whatever, start. Uh, modifying various configuration files. Um, if it's a simple one or two liner, sed's probably the way to go. Maybe echo a line to the bottom of a config file, stuff like that. Um, maybe generating an SSL certificate, generating random passwords, creating users or groups. Um, just make sure that you understand that it's not going to be something that happens again. So if you want to do that before or after an upgrade, use one of the second ones here. Uh, so second thing we have here is the pre-upgrade SH. So upgrading a jail updates the jail to the latest patch level, um, just like previous update fetch. Uh, and then it also runs package upgrade, which checks any packages that are installed. And if they have a new version available, it will install that. Again, it's typically written in POSIX shell, doesn't have to be. Um, runs before the upgrade actually happens. So this is useful for stopping services, staging files, moving files around, uh, rotating log files, stuff like that. All right, next we have the postupgrade.sh. So postupgrade.sh um, runs after the pre-upgraded SH and the actual upgrade process via package upgrade and FreeBSD update fetch has finished. So be written in POSIX shell, doesn't have to be. Uh, it's used to restart services after an update, remove staging directories, other useful tasks. One thing it's uh, very useful for is if package 
you have something that wasn't installed via package, you can update that. Maybe you grab a new binary from their, their website, um, or you grab a, the new release from Git. Uh, you further modify configuration files with utility, like I said, or something that's extremely useful. Some utilities have their own update scripts that may not be called automatically, um, so you can call those. Next, we have the overlay directory. So this directory is present on the artifact uh, repository, hosted in Git. And when the jail is installed, uh, or the plugin jail is installed, it's applied to the jail via Git. So the follow, the structure follows the same thing as it is in the repository. So if we have a uh, file in overlay slash user slash local slash Etsy slash nginx slash nginx.conf and git, that will be placed in slash user slash local slash Etsy slash nginx nginx.conf and it will overwrite what's already there. Uh, so this is very useful for supplying a large configuration file like an nginx configuration file. Um, you know, no one really wants to do 400 lines of said and you could also use this for binaries or images or whatever you need, need it to do. It doesn't have to be a config file. Um, after that, uh, so this is applied after packages have been installed, but before post installed SH is ran. Uh, and that's just to give you the opportunity to further manipulate stuff with post installed SH. All right, anatomy of a plugin, metadata. So these are sort of small files, but they're still quite useful and, and they can really make things a lot easier for you. Uh, so first we have ui.json. This is a more tailored to FreeNAS, but it doesn't have to be. So it's a small file. Uh, typically, um, it'll contain the web interface. So HTTP colon slash slash uh, whatever the IP is, um, you know, slash admin or something. And we can use the variable percent sign percent sign IP percent sign percent sign to automatically grab the IP. We don't have to manually specify it here. And that's extremely useful for using something like DHCP. Um, next thing we have is settings.json. Uh, this is more useful for when you're dealing with user specified data. Uh, it's not really used much. Um, one thing you can specify in here that is pretty useful is service restart. So whenever, uh, uh the jail is restarted, um, it runs a certain command. Next we have the icon file. This is more free now specific. Uh, but you can add it if you want to. It's a little PNG file, 128 pixels by 128 pixels. Next thing we have is the plugin info file. This is going to be extremely useful to store information like randomly generated passwords to, you know, allow the user to log in or a database name or the IP address or something like that. Um, and we do this simply by creating a slash root slash plugin underscore info file. And then we just echo stuff to it with one of the installation scripts. And then we can recall that at any time. Um, and there's a little button to do that, for example, in the Fernandez Web UI. All right, so I do talk a little bit about Fernandez here, so I want to talk about some of the Fernandez specific things. Um, so, Fernandez, if you're not quite familiar, is a free and open source storage appliance based on FreeBSD. Um, it does make heavy use of Fernandez plugins. Um, so, there's two repositories that uh, that are here. So first we have the IX systems, the developers of FreeNAS. This is maintained by them. Um, it's got a number of sort of the more popular ones like Plex or Nextcloud in it. There's also a community repository. Anyone can submit uh, plugins to this. They don't have to be FreeNAS user. They just be anyone. Um, and all you gotta do is just head to the GitHub repository and submit a pull request uh, with essentially your artifact um, file and updating the index file. And the index file uh, is essentially a file with a list of each artifact files, uh, the name, the version of whatever the plugin is at, and where to find them. So you don't have to type the full path to it. You just, I want this plugin, and boom, grab it for me. Um, and one of the nice things is, is that since they do use IOCage heavily in FreeNAS, IX Systems does contribute quite heavily to IOCage. Uh, so let's go over some quick little the popular plugins here. So I mentioned Plex and Nextcloud. So Plex is a very popular uh, media streaming service and Nextcloud is a sort of self-hosted cloud platform. Um, some other ones in here, peer-to-peer -peer clients like Qubit Torrent or Transmission. Um, I've made a few plugins myself like Gidea. I've made Sab NCBD. I've made Private Bin. 
And these are all plugins that you can install yourself even on FreeBSD. It doesn't have to be on FreeNAS. Just simply grab the artifact file or set up the index file and install. As long as you've got an internet connection, you're good to go. Let's talk about uh, plugin development. So you're obviously going to need IOCage installed. You need about a gig of available space, and that's mostly just so IOCage can download your specified release. Um, although the actual amount of space you'll need will depend on what type of plugin you're making. You're also going to need an accessible Git repository like GitHub, um, or it's in self host one like Git, Giddy or something. Um, and I did make a Giddy a plugin. Start with the manual installation of the software in question and note required packages and options. Um, so first create a, just a manual jail, normal clone jail, install the packages by hand, modify the config files by hand, and just, just note what the actual steps are. Maybe do it via sed so you can add that to your scripts later. Um, maybe pre-generate some config files to put in the overlay directory. So next steps to create each component. So typically you want to start with your artifact file because it's kind of the uh, the manifest for everything. Um, make sure you can automate the installation with post install to sh. And there's nothing wrong with creating a jail manually, installing packages, and then running this just to make sure the script works. And it gives you a bit of uh, more extra capability for debugging if you have to. Um, and don't forget to look ahead and pre-post upgrade. Um, Right, so what when you want to update down the road, you know, do I need to ha make sure the service is stopped or rotate this or or grab this other file first, right? So make sure you're you're aware of that. Um, next step is you upload the files to your Git repository. Um, one thing that bit me early on was I kept forgetting to make the files executable before I did that. So make sure you chmod plus x your shell scripts before you upgrade them or upload them, just so that they run perfectly fine when it comes to actually download them into the jail and run them. Um, last step, test it. Uh, you can test it locally, iocage fetch p, path to the plugin named at JSON. Um, and there you go. Okay, uh, I believe it's Q&A time. Um, I'm not quite sure how it's going to work. I believe there's like a Zoom thing or chat room. Uh, so hopefully I should be in there by the time this is aired and you ask me questions. Um, if for some reason I can't answer your question today, uh, feel free to send me an email or hit me up on Twitter. I'll be happy to help you out. All right, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to uh, to watch this. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. Um, and I do want to give a quick little big thank you to uh, Dan and the team for getting this all together. I know it's uh, not an easy job, and I'm really glad they could sort of roll with the punches and get this done. All righty, have a good day. Bye-bye. And we're back with Q&A for Connor. Go ahead, please. Alrighty, so uh, a few questions here. I've answered a couple of them in IRC, but I'll read them for posterity here. So question one, would I have a Postgres database in a jail? How would I go about moving it to the next FreeBSD release without losing the database? Um, so as other user pointed out, open restore would be the way to go. Um, IOCage does have its own built-in Utility, IOCage upgrade, dash R, whatever the release you want to go to, and then the jail name. Um, if you're going with a clone jail, uh, you will basically miss out on some of the space savings of that. Um, so it really depends on what jail type you're using. If you're using just a thick jail, it'd probably be the way to go. Alrighty, next question. Can you use IOCage FS tab to add storage mounts to an IOCage plugin? Yes. Uh, simply IOKage FS tab dash E jail name and edit it like normal, or you can use dash A and just put the um, source and destination and whether you want it to read write or read only. Uh, next question Which networking type do plugins use by default? Uh, by default, it's shared IP. Um, if you want to enable VNet, it's simply just IOKage set VNet equal on and then specify. Uh, your IP address and default route. Uh, let's see. Um, 
another question here on the difficulty from moving from easy jail uh nope moving from easy jail is pretty easy i was using easy jail uh prior to this um the gist of it is you stop your easy jail you copy out all your old data to the new data set um make sure you follow wherever you have your um io cage up so if it's in you know slash io cage jails whatever the new jails name is slash root copy everything into there um one thing i will note is if you set up options whether that's allowing like a fuse map or vnet or anything like that you need to reconfigure that again you can just do that with iocage set um, or just edit the config directly um and last question here uh, not sure if this is really asked. Do you really live on a beach? Uh, yes, during the summer, um, build a sort of lean to shack. Any other questions, Kyle? Um, let's see. Sorry, excuse me. Um, nope. That was it? I think that's the. Sorry. I was afraid I've broken in. No, no problem. Um, alrighty. Thank you very much, everyone, for coming. Hope you enjoyed it. And okay. feel free to reach out to me on Twitter or my email. Any other questions? Thank you. Goodbye. Alrighty.